proud member of the Dice Tower Network and a podcast about all things board games that you can listen to in less time than it takes to fully appreciate beautiful spring weather. Board Game Blitz is sponsored by Gray Fox Games. This week, we're talking about Roll and Write games. First, we discuss a couple games we've played recently, like Hey Yo and Draftosaurus. Then, we talk about our top five Roll and Write games. And now, here are your hosts, Camby and Crystal. Two quick announcements before we hop into the main episode, and that is that this weekend is the next Tabletop Live Network event. Ambie and I are not one of the featured streamers this month, but we still want to give a shout out to TLN and all of the awesome streamers who will be part of this month's event. So that is going to start at noon Pacific time on Saturday, the 24th, and will go until noon Pacific time on the 25th. So make sure you go to tabletoplivenetwork.com to get all the details and see all the streamers who are playing some really awesome games this weekend. Yay! Also, over on boardgamegeek.com, the Golden Geek Awards are currently running. The nominations just closed last night, so we don't know what has been nominated for anything yet, but there are awards for like best game in in different categories, like light games, heavy games, yeah, and medium, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a whole bunch of other specific yeah. categories as well. So so go va- vote for your favorite games. But another c- category is the the best podcast. So um, we're not sure if we got nominated for best co- podcast this year, but if we did, we'd appreciate if you would vote for us for <laughs> for the finals as well. <laughs> yeah, we we've been nominated a couple of times in the past, and we're always really really appreciative of our community for supporting us and for nominating us for this award but i'll admit i'm especially proud of the work that ambi and i have done over the past year you Mm -hmm. know the pandemic has been very hard for everyone and no judgment to any content creators who haven't been able to keep up their regular schedules like it is completely understandable that that would be a difficult thing to do and somehow ambi and i didn't miss a beat uh, and it was a struggle at times, mm-hmm. truly, like, especially for me going through my divorce and everything else. Um, mm-hmm. And Ambie's taking care of tiny babies. Like we, we put in some really good work this past year. And I just, if you all like the work that we do, we would really appreciate your vote if we were lucky enough to get nominated. And if we didn't yeah. get nominated, this whole section is going to be weird, but I <laughs> don't care. <laughs> Recently, I got my Kickstarter fulfillment shipment of all my Oink games, which I bought seven different Oink games. But one which of this, them... this Kickstarter was originally slated to deliver in August, right? Like this I coming don't, I don't August. Know, but yeah, it was like, like this is the earliest a Kickstarter has ever shown up at my house. I got yeah. four games from them. <laughs> yeah. So um, we've talked about Oink games a lot before, but but I played Hey Yo which came out in 2020. It's a rhythm game. And this is like the thing that I was most excited for, for getting in the Kickstarter. I, I added it as an add-on and back to the Kickstarter mainly for this. Yeah, it wasn't even one of the main games as part yeah, of yeah. this Kickstarter, but you were like, oh, I'm adding that on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Heyo was designed by Takashi Saito and um, published by Oink Games in 2020. It's a rhythm cooperative card game. So you each have a hand of, or a deck of cards split between the people. I only played it two players so far with Toby, but uh, the cards have a top and bottom, and so you can play it either way, rotated, and they have like little words and symbols on them. So you're trying to like match them up to get points, but you score backwards. So like you play forwards and score backwards, and you're alternating playing, but you also are playing to the beat. So there's this little sound maker in the game. It goes like this. I wish you all could see Ambie's face right now. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm bouncing to the beat. Um, anyway, during those and smiling those... <laughs> bigger than I think I've ever seen you smile before. Like you look right now, like how how I looked the first time I put on my bunny ears. <laughs> like that's what you look like. Anyway, anyway, so so it plays that, and every time it goes, does the whistle thing, y- you play a card. And if you don't play on the beat, then you mess up. And you have to like flip over one of the cards at the beginning to so you would lose points. So you're allowed to talk about what cards you have in your hand and stuff. You just don't have much time to do it. <laughs> and you can't actually show people the cards. So I played it. Um, we beat level one. There, there's multiple levels too. You take out cards 
in the deck uh, for the later levels and you have to get 50 points to pass a level. So it gets harder because you take out the easier cards and then there's less cards to make the same number of points. <laughs> but it, so far, it's, it's been really fun. I've only played it three times so far, but I got it like two days ago. So <laughs> that's... So that's pretty impressive. Oh, I played it four times. <laughs> <Yeah>. Four times. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really quick game. It just takes like 15 minutes. But it, it's pretty interesting because because of how you're trying to play things and match it up and then you have to play a scoring card in order to score but you're scoring the cards before it and um like if someone breaks the pattern then you can't score any of those cards because you can only score cards that are in in order or in um a set like all blue 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 but if you put like a red in between the blues then that messes it up and if a person before you doesn't have any blues and has to play something else then they, they mess it up and like you so you have to communicate that while it's going in the rhythm and um i really like it so it's a stressful kind of turn-based real-time game <laughs> cooperative game because there's the rhythm but it's turn-based so that it's really unique <laughs> yeah heyo is very unique and it's it's fun so far. And that's Heyo by Oink Games. They make a lot of unique games. <laughs> this one is in my box as well. And I pulled it out. And of course, I had to play the music on the little thing. I was like, <laughs> this tiny little device is so cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it does say in the rules that like you can use your own music if you wanted. And they give you the beats per minute for the device that came in the box, which I think is 56. And so you could look up songs by beats mm. per minute. But then, of course, you don't have that whistle sound that's like... <laughs> I think yeah. anybody who has studied music in any sh shape or form knows what the downbeat is, you know, but like not everybody would know that. So needless to say, I'm excited to try it soon. Yeah. All right. Well, the game I'm talking about today is one that I've actually been playing a lot over the past like few months. Um, I don't own a physical copy of it yet, but I've been playing it on Board Game Arena and that is Draftosaurus. So Draftosaurus is a game that released in 2019, published by Ankama designed by, apologies in advance for the butchered French names here, but Antoine Bauza, Corentin Lebrat, Ludovic Montblanc, and Theo Riviere. Draftosaurus is a game that is dinosaur themed where you have a little dino park that you are going to be putting dinosaurs into and you collect those dinosaurs through a draft. We've probably not explained drafting in a while. Most of our viewers probably know what that is, but in whenever you are drafting things in a game, you get a hand or a collection of items. You pick one of the items you were given and then you pass the rest to the player on either your left or your right. And then you take the set from the player that was on the other side, pick another one, pass, pick, pass, etc. until all of the things have been picked. And in this case, instead of drafting cards, like in a lot of drafting games, you're drafting dino meeples to put onto your board. There's two sides to the board, a summer side and a winter side. They are similar, but work a little bit differently. Each side of the board has a number of pens on it, and those pens for the dinos have rules regarding what types of dinos can be placed in them and how the dinos will score at the end of the round. You will put a total of 12 dinos onto the board before scoring happens which is not that many dinos. It goes by so fast. And some of the pins do things like um, you want all dinos of the same type or all dinos of different types, or you want pairs of dinos, things like that. And depending on where your dinos end up and how you score, most points at the end wins. It is a really simple game at its heart, but I've just kind of really fallen in love with it. I've actually, I looked it up just before we started recording. I've played this game more than 20 times on Board Game Arena in just the past, I don't know how long. Um, let's see, when was my first game? I can actually look at that too. <laughs> Yay, stats. February 4th was my first game. So in a little over two months, I've played wow. more than 20 games of Draftosaurus, which that's a lot more than I would typically play any game in my collection. I will be getting a physical copy of Draftosaurus. I really want to uh, add this one to my collection. I think it's a really good light filler-esque game, family weight, easy to teach, bright colors, great artwork. The artists on this game, there's three of them, Jiahui, Eva Gao, Roman Kucharski, and Vipin Alex Jacob. It's all really beautiful and cute, and I, I like it quite a bit. But yeah, this one, it's 
simple but fun. Same type of thing that I've really been enjoying lately. And it is free to play on Board Game Arena. I don't remember if it's a premium. I think it might be a premium game. So a premium member has to start it. Um, but you can hop into any game that's already been started on Board Game Arena. And there are also expansions for this game that are already out in France, but I don't believe have hit the US yet. I think they're coming actually fairly soon. But chances are what I might end up doing is just buying the base game and the expansions all at mm-hmm. once, once they are available. And I'll be able to play more games in person soon. Um, yeah. I, yeah, my, my, as of the, the date of this episode releasing, it will have been two weeks since my second shot. And I have a couple of my best gaming friends who are now either vaccinated or almost vaccinated as well. And in fact, one of my best friends from my game group who I love more than anything is actually moving to Sweden in two months. So yeah, (laughs) so I'm hoping to get some really good gaming time in with her before she leaves town. So I'm literally just going to make her come over and play games with me all the time. (laughs) She doesn't know this yet, but it's happening. (laughs) Um, No, but Draftosaurus, super fun. Um, If you are looking for games, like light, fun, quick games to add to your collection, this one to me seems like a no brainer. Like it is not Mm -hmm. crazy deep, but there is a lot of interesting strategy within it. So I would highly recommend it. we not done this topic before ambi oh wait i know you i I tend to be the roll and write fanatic of the two of us but during the pandemic you've been playing a lot more roll and writes this is true yeah so i i think i still don't like prefer roll and write as a genre in a lot of board games but i've been playing a lot more solo roll and write games which i like them better like the solo puzzly type games but like yeah i still haven't played that many multiplayer roll and write games so a lot of my list is going to be solo roll and write games that i've played during the pandemic but that's fine they're they're still good i mean i think that's awesome because they're the ones that a lot of people probably haven't heard as much about and Mm -hmm. might really be interested in so hopefully you're going to bring some awareness to some games that people might not be aware of already yeah so i know that like roll and write games obviously yahtzee is kind of the thing that we all think of (laughs) as the original roll and write but there have been lots of roll and rights throughout the years, but I would say there has kind of been over the past three to four years, I'm just guessing, like, kind of a little bit of a surge of lots of new roll and write games. Yeah. Do we, like, do you think that this trend of lots of roll and write games is going to slow down or is already slowing down? What, like, what are your thoughts uh, on this? I'm not really sure because, well, I haven't been paying as much attention to, like, news recently, so I don't know... It, what new roll and write games are coming out? I did see that there is a there's an Escape the Curse of the Temple cooperative roll and write game coming. Wait, this really? Year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to. I know. That. I saw this on Board Game Geek when I was scrolling through roll and write games, and I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah. See, like so, I haven't heard of that, but uh, I hadn't either. Okay. So okay. yeah. Yeah, that sounds interesting. So yeah, like there's still there's still new stuff to be had in roll and write um and we're including like flip and write as well right yes like random generation and then write down i I remember there were a lot of um blank the dice game (laughs) things where like they had take a game and then make a dice game version of it yeah i don't know if they're still doing that as much I've I've never really been a huge fan of that specific trend. Like, it seems like it's rare that somebody just likes the dice game version of a thing. Mm -hmm. And most of the people who love the original thing don't aren't always keen on the dice version of it. So (laughs) although I guess probably from a design standpoint, it might be easier for publishers when they are starting from kind of like already a thing. So maybe those games are a little bit easier. Too, maybe? (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Um (laughs) But I, I will say I, I appreciate that publishers have started really like coming out with more unique and in-depth and like mm-hmm. deeper roll and write games. Like, you know, the days of just colors and numbers written on yeah. a sheet with no theme, no context. Like there are a lot of good games that fit into that category, many of which <laughs> I own. But mm-hmm. those... They're they're a little bit of a dime a dozen at this point, even if they are fun. They aren't the ones that my brain tends to be like, ooh, yeah, I really want to play that. Unless sometimes if they're new, I'll want to play it a whole bunch. But yeah, I appreciate that like heavier roll and write games have started to become a thing. Mm -hmm. And those games tend to be really fun. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hop into it then, Ambie. And let's go start with our number fives. All right. 
So my number five is not a published game. It's a free print and play game, which a lot of my list might be, but it is called Rollway Station, which is an 18xx roll and write game. <laughs> um, so, okay, it's an 18xx inspired, so, or themed, I guess, uh, but it's a solo game designed by Kendall McKenzie. You, you're rolling dice to, and each turn you're, you're distributing the dice and you have to get a share, you get a train like distribution thing and then you also build track and then so you're trying to get shares of the companies that you have track for and you need to get trains in that those companies in order to like score points so you kind of have to balance everything out and make sure you're building routes for the ones that you have shares for and getting trains for it so it's like a bunch of things that you're trying to do at once with the dice rolls that you're given to get the right things because in order to get specific shares you need to get like if the two dice are equal then you get this this company if it's like you subtract or you add them and get seven then it's this company or like something like that right it also has advanced rules which i haven't played um i've only played all these games that i've only played a couple times um except for my number one but (laughs) um yeah so rollaway station it's very um it's a more in-depth roll and write than usual i think uh, or at least a lot of the ones that I've played for the solo ones. And I like just planning that out. So if you are interested in 18xx like route building part, then Rollway Station kind of has that um, as a solo game. All right. My number five is Fiverr Findin, a 2019 game published by Haba, designed by Jurgen P. Grinnell. And that's Fiverr spelled the numeral five... <laughs> E-R, Findin, <laughs> F-I-N-D-E-N. So it's hard to, you'll see it in the show notes. But this is a, uh, one of Haba's games that is not geared towards children, which honestly, most of the games I've played from Haba that aren't children's games have just been so fun. And Fiverr Findin is no exception to that. You have a board with a whole bunch of colored blocks in a grid on it. And uh, you roll the dice and then you have to find all of the dice symbols and colors that show up, but in a specific polyomino shape on your board. And the players can either play with boards that are the same or different. And so usually we play with different boards because it makes it a little more interesting. The polyomino shapes are these little tiles that are around and there is a timer. So there's a real time aspect to this. So players are looking for these shapes and marking them with a dry erase marker onto their boards. There's another mode where you can only use each shape one time throughout the course of the game and it's not as timed, but This game is super fun. And Ambie, I know you haven't played this one yet, but because of the real-time aspect and the polyominoes, I think this is one that you would really enjoy. Um, And I've really liked it quite a bit. And the component quality is super great, just like most stuff from Haba. So Fiverr Findin is my number five. And I just realized that I did that, and I swear that wasn't on purpose. (laughs) (laughs) I I literally... I literally didn't realize it right away until just now. I swear. (laughs) I didn't realize it either. That's funny. That's cool. My number four is Second Chance, which is a (laughs) polyomino roll and write game designed by Uwe Rosenberg and published by Stronghold Games in the US. So I think I haven't played that many polyomino roll and write games. So I, I like polyomino games. And this one, you're filling in a grid. You, you flip over different cards with polyomino shapes on them and then you like pick one to fill in your grid and then like if you can't fill in and near the end you get a second chance. <laughs> um, you can flip over another card and try to fill that one in. Uh, I only played it once but I, I just like I like patchwork and like that spatial stuff so I liked that part of it. But yeah it, probably if I played Five or Findin that might be on my list or something. I don't know. <laughs> But yes, that, that's second I honestly, chance. I think you would like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. My number four is a little bit of a cheat, but not really. It is technically three different games, but they are all kind of in the same family of games. And that is Gans Schoen Clever, Doppelt So Clever, and Clever Hawk Dry. They are three games designed by Wolfgang Warsch, published by Schmidt Spiele and Stronghold Games. And... They are like dice combos 
the game basically like <laughs> yeah. you, it's this is one this is one of those games that i would struggle to describe well in an audio format if you haven't seen or played it but basically you're rolling a bunch of different colored dice and you have a score sheet that has different colored sections on it and after you roll the dice you get to pick one die and then write on the section of your sheet that matches that die's color but based on which dice you pick some of the other dice may get removed from play and become available to the other players and so you want to only pick low numbered dice early often which makes your decisions a little bit tougher but a lot of the things on your score sheet when you mark them down will give you another thing you can mark down elsewhere on your sheet. And so the fun parts of these games are you mark a thing, which allows you to mark this other thing, which allows you to mark another thing. And it is so incredibly satisfying to like combo, 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 combo. Like it's really fun. I have played all three of these games a bunch of times now. I only own the physical copies of the first two. I don't own a physical copy of the third one yet, but I've been obsessed with the app version of it lately. In fact, I recently posted on Twitter, I scored over 400 points on the third one for the first time, and I was very excited wow. about it. It is a higher scoring game than the other mm -hmm. two. Like the in the app, the highest scores on the scoreboard are like over 500, which seems wow. nonsensical to me. <laughs> if you look at how I got 400, I'm like, how could you get 500 points in this game? Regardless, Wolfgang Morsch is a really talented and smart designer. We've talked about him at length and some of his other games in the past, but all three of these games are really fun. I don't think anybody necessarily needs to own all three of them, but I enjoy all of them. And so I'm probably going to be one of the people that does own all three of them because I like them a lot. So, yep, that's Gone Shown Clever, Doppelt So Clever, and Clever Hawk Dry. There are also English names for those games, but those are the, the German names of the game. Okay, my number three is Utopia Engine, which is another free print and play game. This was in, designed by Nick Hayes in 2010. So Utopia Engine is a solo roll and write adventure game. And it's probably the most involved roll and write game I've played. It lasts like an hour. <laughs> and, and in it, you are an adventurer trying to protect this town from monsters while also building up this Utopia Engine to like prevent doomsday from happening. So you're exploring different areas and then um, you're rolling dice and trying to like the main mechanism of it is you roll dice and then you put, have to put one die on top and one die on the bottom. Um, and there's like the top row has three spaces and the bottom row has three spaces. So you roll two dice and you pick like which of the three spaces to put it in each time. But then like you do that three times. So then the last time you don't really get to pick and you're trying to subtract it to get either the highest or the lowest value, depending on what you're doing. Like if you're fighting monsters or if you're adventuring or like you're building the Utopia engine, they're all slightly different, but it, it's mainly like the whole subtracting thing and you get to pick where you put the dice. So it's interesting, like deciding where you put the dice and then you're hoping to get like, okay, maybe you play it safe and like you put things next to each other or like you, you leave it so you have to roll pairs or something at the end. <laughs> or, so yeah, I, I like that's interesting. It's exciting. And then you fight monsters. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's like a whole adventure <laughs> in a roll and write game. Also, like the art is really, it's uh, all black and white, but I guess there are color versions online too, but like it, there's a lot of art on the thing and it looks, I like the style of it. It's like a couple of sheets and you overlap them. So like when you're out adventuring, you see the wilderness and then like off to the sides, it has the sides of the other page um, are showing that show you information. And then when you go back to your workshop, you put the second sheet on top <laughs> so that it's like layered differently. So Utopia Engine is a lot of fun. It's, it's very involved. So not like a relaxing game. Are any of my games relaxing? I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> you don't. You don't tend to to gravitate toward the like zen games. You yeah, like. I, I think I do stuff video with a little bit of stress. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, if if you want like a heavier adventure game, then you should try Utopia Engine. All right, my number three 
is another game that I technically do not own yet because it, I just got to know it during the pandemic, playing it online through Zoom with friends who did own the game. And that is Trails of Tucana. So Trails of Tucana was published in 2019 from Aporta Games, designed by Eilif Svensson and Christian Amundsen Ostby. It is a technically a flip and write game where you're flipping over cards and then players are acting simultaneously. So this is a, one of those games that's really neat because there's no downtime and all of the players are doing things simultaneously. You have a board that is the island of Tucana and it shows villages and other monuments and landmarks on the island. And each turn, two terrain cards get flipped up. So let's say one is a mountain and one is water. That you, all of the players then have to draw a line between two tiles of those specific terrain types. And you can draw that line anywhere on your board as long as it's connecting a mountain to a water somewhere. There's no restrictions, which sounds great until you realize that like eventually at the end of the game, you want to have connected a bunch of different things all across your board. You want to connect specific artifacts to one another. You want to draw paths from harbors to other harbors. And because you're putting these random lines kind of in random places, eventually you're just like, oh my God, I need something with those two terrain types to come up right now or all of this is for nothing. <laughs> and so there is a little bit of stress in that part of it, but it's it's mostly a chill game, I would say. And pretty easy to teach, easy to learn and plays up to eight players with simultaneous yeah. play. So that's pretty cool. And the each player technically has a tiny bit of a different starting setup because when you're writing letters for the different harbors around the outside of the board each player starts theirs in a slightly different location around so like no player's board will be exactly the same for sure and that makes it even more interesting there are two different sides to the board i believe like there's a easier side and a harder side again i don't own it yet i've only played it over zoom a handful of times with friends online but i've really kind of fallen in love with this one it's super interesting and really really fun so that's trails of tucana my number two is Super Skill Pinball 4K, which was designed by Jeff Engelstein and published by WizKids in 2020, although I've only played the free print and play version, which they have two tables available for print and play. So in the published game, there are four tables and they actually look like pinball tables, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. They're so, <laughs> so cool. Yeah. So this is a pinball themed roll and write, and it's pretty thematic. I like pinball. I have a pinball ma machine and... um. I've only played what the one table, Carnival, but I, I really enjoyed it. Like y you have the ball and then you like roll to see where it goes because e each bumper in different place on the board has die numbers. So like you can roll the die and then you can go to those places and then you can get multi-ball and you're like, um, you have to like get to the flipper and it go can go back up to certain zones, but it then always falls down otherwise. And... <laughs> It felt really thematic, um, except for the whole keeping score thing. Like that was the only part that didn't feel thematic because you have to like bubble in your score. Each time you hit something, you get points, which I mean is thematic, but like having to keep score is not thematic because in regular yeah. football, it just keeps score for you. Um, so that was the only thing that like lost the immersion for me, but I still really enjoyed uh, Super Skill Pinball 4 Cade, and I keep wanting to play it again, but I haven't yet. <laughs> Well, we should talk to Jeff about getting both of us final print copies of that game. So Jeff was kind enough to pass, uh, uh, when he was still doing playtesting, he was kind enough to pass along some print and play versions of the four tables that he was working on for the game at oh. the time before it was published. In fact, he actually, I had those before it had even been announced that it was coming oh, out. Like wow. I knew... I know, I felt very special. And it is so much fun, but I still don't own a production copy of the game. And I'm really excited mm. about the Ramp It Up expansion that oh, he's there's working an expansion? on. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, and it has ramps. <laughs> everybody wanted ramps, apparently. Because, you know, everybody who plays pinball, you know yeah, that the yeah. ramps are the best. Like, shooting the ramps is the most fun part. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, we should we should talk to Jeff and see how we can maybe get a hold of that because that would actually be really fun to play on stream together mm. because we could easily play together if we both had the sheets. Yeah, yeah I actually Ooh. like the time I played was with my parents. We streamed it because they were visiting. So it was a while ago. <laughs> but 
we each got a sheet and we played it and they liked it too because they also have played pinball <laughs> yeah chat can play with us too oh man i want to play this on stream now <laughs> this was definitely on my short list of, of roll and rights mm -hmm. that i really really enjoy all right, my number two is Cartographers. Cartographers was published in 2019 from Thunderworks Games, designed by Jordi Adan. Fun fact, I learned from the people at Thunderworks Games that Cartographers was never really intended to be this big hit game of theirs, which sounds oh, wow. silly considering how popular it is, but I, I don't, and I'm going to get some of the details of this story wrong because it's been a long time since it was recounted to me, but I believe... This kind of got released in the midst of some of their other larger releases as kind of just a, oh, here's a cute little roll and write game that we think is cool. And it kind of blew up. Like everybody oh, fell yeah. in love with it. Um, again, the details of that story, I don't remember exactly, but I know that they weren't expecting it to be as big of a phenomenon as it has been. And Cartographers has gotten a lot of buzz for good reason, because in the game, you are literally drawing out a map um, for the queen, I think. I don't remember exactly the reason why you're making a map for her, but that's, that's the general gist of it. So this is another game where action happens simultaneously. So I guess I'm kind of drawn to those. So there's really no downtime. There are a number of scoring goals that happen each round. Um, there's four total scoring goals, but only two of the four happen every round and they rotate. So each goal will score a total of two times throughout the course of the game. You're flipping over cards that will tell you specific polyomino shapes and terrain types that you have to draw onto your map. And you are trying to organize those different shapes fitting into whatever you already have drawn onto your map that will help you complete the scoring goals. So you might wanna get a whole bunch of houses together in one large grouping, or you may want to fill in a very large square on your map and any terrain type, or you want to connect mountains with forests. There's a whole bunch of different things. It's variable in the setup, so it's different every time you play. And there are also goblins or monsters that show up. And this is where the game gets really interesting because when one of these bad cards show up, you pass your board to the player on either your left or your right, and they get to draw some monsters on your sheet usually in a place that's going to screw up everything you're working on and make it more difficult for you because monsters will cause negative points at the end of every round if you haven't filled in the spaces around them. There's a lot of little interesting details in here. This is one of, I would say, the heavier roll and write games that exist. It's not super difficult to learn, but it is more in depth than a lot of other roll and write games. And it is just a blast to play. I love this one so much. I've talked about Cartographer's Heroes before, the new standalone game that's coming out in this series, which is also awesome. I really just, these games are super, super wonderful. And I would highly recommend them for people who are looking for a roll and write game that's a little bit meatier. Also, pro tip, buy yourself some colored pencils or colored pens to write on your sheet with instead of just like a regular pencil or pen, because if you do all of the things in their specific colors, instead of just the shapes, it makes it look really pretty, which is just fun mm. to do. So Yay. that's my number two cartographers, which I still haven't played, but I want to play at some point because <laughs> I think we I should like make it. that happen. Yeah. My number one is another free print and play game um it is bargain basement bathysphere which was designed by scott slomiani in 2018 this is a campaign game um so it's a push your luck solo uh campaign adventure game where you're you have a bargain basement bathysphere <laughs> which is like a submarine uh, really not great submarine and you're diving down into the ocean trying to go down as far as you can get and then come back up without dying and um on the way like getting treasures and stuff so theme wise it sounds kind of like deep sea adventure but it's a solo game and the way it works is you can roll dice and go down or up for each die you roll but you have to move the full movement and when you land on a space you mark off that space uh and certain spaces have icons on it that do damage to you either through stress oxygen or damage and if you pass a space without it being marked off then you take that damage but if you land on it then you don't take it so you kind of like want to make sure you land on the spaces so you like use your dice rolls and you can go backwards and then forwards so like if you need a one but you rolled like 
a bunch of fours and a five or something, you can go back four and then go forward five to get that one and land on a space. So there's a lot of like going back and forth and stuff. And then as as the game goes on, there's seven chapters or eight chapters, chapters zero through seven. And each of them have like four games in there. Each game is like 15 to 20 minutes long, but they keep adding rules. So like it gets more treasures and more things that happen that I'm not going to tell you because it's spoilers, <laughs> but but it gets a lot more involved. And I'm partway through the campaign. I just finished chapter two and I, I'm really enjoying it. And I, I want to see like what comes next. And it's really, really exciting just trying to survive each time. I think I'm getting pretty good at surviving and like getting decent scores coming back up to the surface. So that's a bargain basement bathysphere. If you really want if you want to try a solo campaign game that like changes each time, it's pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. And my number one will probably not come as a surprise to most people because I've <laughs> talked about this game a lot. And that is Let's Make a Bus Route, uh, designed by Sashi, published by Sashi and Sashi. <laughs> this is a Japanese roll and write game where players are all trying to make a bus route. But unlike most roll and write games that see players drawing things onto an individual board of their very own, all of the players are drawing their routes on a single community board. And that can create traffic because you are drawing your bus routes along the same city streets and when you run into other players routes then the traffic um, can cause negative points for you but you are basically trying to accomplish a whole bunch of different goals picking up passengers and dropping them off picking up elderly people to let them ride the bus for a little while picking up students to uh, and going to universities. Like there's a whole bunch of different things you're trying to do. And you also have a personal goal that you're trying to meet specific touch points on the map that you're trying to make sure your route goes through. And all of the action in this game goes by pretty quickly. And they just came out with a new one to two player dice game version of this, which I'm so excited to try in the hopefully near future. But Let's Make a Bus Route is hands down my favorite roll and write or flip and write game. This one is cards specifically. It is just so fun and so different from most roll and write games. And it's incredibly strategic in how you use the routes that come up on the cards, like what shapes you're allowed to draw to manipulate your route specifically to score the best and it's always interesting and always enjoyable so i highly recommend it if you can find a copy it is difficult um although i believe sashi and sashi is going to start doing international shipping from their new website in the near future i think mm. so at least i'm hoping so because i want the dice game version <laughs> of this <laughs> desperately um but yeah so that's let's let's make a bus route from sashi and sashi yay we would love to hear your all's favorite roll and write games. So head over to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Board Game Geek, all the usual places, and let us know what your top five roll and write games are. And tell us which ones we forgot about, because inevitably after I do some of these lists, my friend Kathy's like, you forgot about this game that you love. And I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so Kathy will tell me if I forgot any of my favorites this time around. <laughs> and I love her for it. And that's it for this week's Board Game Blitz. Visit our website, boardgameblitz.com, for video and blog content, as well as to get links to all our social media pages. This episode was sponsored by Gray Fox Games. Have you heard all the buzz about After the Empire and wanted to check it out for yourself? Head to GameFound today to get in on the second printing. Gray Fox Games. Quality games cleverly crafted. Join the Blitzketeer community on Discord by following the link in the show notes. You can support the show by leaving us a rating and review on your podcast provider. And if you want behind-the-scenes access and an invite to our private Slack channel, visit patreon.com slash boardgameblitz. Our theme song was composed by Andrew Mara. Technical support provided by Toby Mount. Board Game Blitz is part of the Dice Town Network. Until next time, I want to roll and ride all night. And also every day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Published by a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that's the case uh, and you're like, well, which one of you is the real publisher? <laughs>